Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle and today I'm going to be bringing you a series reading vlog. So I am going to be reading the Valenshek Legacy series by Tate James. This series includes Heist, Forgery, and Restoration, which I don't have. These are the Mystic Box editions of Heist and Forgery and I think they are gorgeous. They have purple and red and then on the backs are also signed by Tate and I am really hoping that I can add restoration to my collection when they come out with that one. So this is one of Tate's series that is part of the Shadow Grove world. The other series in the Shadow Grove world are the Madison Kate series, the Hades series, and the Guild series. I am super excited to add this one to the list of ones that I've read and I've been holding off because Restoration just came out and I wanted to be able to binge all three of these in a row and now is the time and I'm super excited to get started on this. So this one is strictly male-female where most of Tate's are why choose. I'm excited to see what she does with it though. I've heard it's still a really good series and I'm ready to pick it up. But what I know about this one is it is following a game that is part of the criminal underworld. I guess this guy needs to steal a painting and this girl knows where the painting is, but she's not going to give it up easily. I don't really want to know much more. I want to go in. I know Tate really puts some interesting stuff into her books and I'm excited to see where she goes with this one and I don't want to spoil anything for myself. So I will check in with you guys when I read a little bit of this one and let you know how it's going. Hey guys, so I'm here with my first update for Heist. I am a hundred pages in and I am really really liking it so far. I love Tate James books so I didn't think this would be any different. I am really really enjoying it. It is following Triss and John. Triss is a student right now. She is TAing for her teacher's class, but her teacher is out on leave. And John is trying to steal a painting, and he is actually also an art teacher at a different college. So he knows that she is kind of in on where this painting is. He thinks she has something to do with it. So he has taken over that teacher's role. So he is now her teacher and they are clashing like no other. I love the banter between them. It is definitely hot and cold. He really likes her pretty much first sight and she thinks he's super hot but can't stand him already. Their first interaction actually, he pretty much tells her that her painting is shit and it is terrible and he didn't realize that it was hers. He thought her name Tristian was a boy name. So he's like, this artist is terrible and he's bad talking her right to her face and he didn't even know it. <laughs> So far, we've also actually seen a couple different characters from other Shadow Grove series. We've seen Archer and one of the other boys. It doesn't tell which one it is. And we've seen Archer's grandma. And then we've seen Carol, who I think is Danny from the Guild's mom. She is actually in one of like the first chapters. John is actually stealing something from her and she knows it's him, calls him up and is like, you better return that to me now. And he does. Luckily, I'm really hoping that we see some people from the Hades series since that is one of my favorites. And I really like how strong-willed Tate makes all of her female characters. In this, Triss is no nonsense. She is going to tell it as it is. And I am really, really liking her so far. So Triss lives in this building that is owned by her neighbors on the top floor. They are a gay couple who I am really, really enjoying. I really hope we see more of them and they come into play a little bit more. So they treat her like family and it kind of seems that they're into some shady stuff too. So I'm interested to see where that goes. And then we find out that John is on the right track since Triss restores paintings for this crime family in the area. And that is obviously what he's looking for. He's heard that that family owns the poppy field painting that he's looking for. And he was trying to get in with her so that he could get that painting and steal it for the game. And then one other funny thing that I really enjoyed so far is he keeps ruining her dates. He's seen her out at the college bar with some guys and 
every time she's out he'll say something to her and he'll get stuck in her head and she ends up not having a good time plus the guys apparently are not so great anyway and I can't wait to see them get together because obviously that's where this is going and I am ready for this relationship. I have a feeling it's going to be a very chaotic one and I can't wait to see what they get up to. But that's it for now and I will check in once I'm a little bit further into the book. So I finished the book and I do have to say Tate has done it again. This book was amazing and I cannot wait to pick up the next book. So I love how John just informs the Dean that he's going to be seducing his TA Triss and that there's nothing the Dean can do about it, which I thought was really funny. The Dean has his own thing going on where he's not going to tell anybody, but he wants feet pics from John. Not my thing. Kind of creepy, but I'm interested to see if that kind of continues on. Also, apparently John likes breaking into Triss's house and stealing her vibrators and watching her sleep at night. And I think I mentioned it earlier where he stole one of them, but she buys a new one and he actually steals that one too. I think in the end he has like five of her vibrators and then he starts stealing other things when she's not buying any more of them. He steals like paintbrushes and stuff like that too. So in order to get closer to Triss, John has tried to befriend her neighbors, Hank and Nelson, who are the older gay couple that live next to her and treat her like a grandchild pretty much. They helped raise her after she left her family and are a pretty big part of this book now. So they finally end up doing it. There's a whole shower scene. I got this lovely art print from Mystic Box when I got the forgery and heist editions from them. I'm pretty sure that this is what that is depicting. I really enjoyed that scene. It was really hot and well worth it. But right after they end up having sex, John kind of pieces out right away. He is developing feelings and doesn't want to be. So he kind of insults her and then leaves right away, which not cool, John. Don't do that to anybody. But in the end, Triss pretty much stops talking to him for a couple days. But Triss has a party to go to at the Grimaldi house and Hank and Nelson know about this. They actually end up asking John to go with her to protect her. This is what John wanted because John is trying to steal the painting from Mr. Grimaldi. So he is super excited that he gets to go with Triss, but he's trying to lay low and not show how excited he is about it. So during the party, John sneaks into the vault. He doesn't see the painting that he's looking for, and he was kind of disappointed about it. But in his head, that means that that's the painting Triss is working on, which it actually is the painting that she's working on. Because after the party, he decides to start driving her to work. He breaks something in her car so she can't drive it herself. And one of the days when he gets there, Mr. Grimaldi actually comes out and starts talking to him. He finds out that he is an art professor. And when he comes back to pick Triss up from work that day, Mr. Grimaldi actually brings him into the vault himself and has Triss show him the painting that she's working on. And while she's closing the painting drawer, he steals her passcode for that drawer. So now he knows the code for that so he can come back whenever and steal that painting. Also, there's a new guy, I think his name is Brad, who moves into one of the apartments below Triss. I have a feeling that he's going to be bad news because I don't think this is a Why Choose series and I really want Triss to pick John and not this new guy. <laughs> but apparently everybody else thinks the new guy is super hot, so I'm interested to see if he pops up more in this second book. And then I believe it's the next night after the party where John and Triss have some goodbye sex. She doesn't know it's goodbye sex. So John ends up stealing the painting. My heart was racing the whole time during that scene because I was so worried that he was going to get caught and I did not want him to get caught. But he manages to get out. One of the other contestants in the game, Tink, she is there with Dexter, one of the sons, and she sees John escaping with the painting and she knows that she's lost the game. So the next day, Triss gets called from Mr. Grimaldi and she realizes that the painting has been stolen. So she's terrified to go to work. She's afraid that they're going to kill her because she was one of the only other people that had access. But John staged it in a way where it didn't look like she was the one that did it because he was trying to protect her. So that was really good. So Triss ends up putting it together that she realizes John is the one that actually stole the painting. He stole her vibrators. He stole her fingerprints. He had access to everything. He saw her put her code in and she's like, oh crap, this is not good. 
possibly the next day or possibly a couple days later, there is a news article on the TV that is saying that the person who stole the poppy flowers painting actually stole a forgery. So as soon as Tris sees this, she starts freaking out and she calls the neighbors and she's like, they found out it was a forgery. We need to go now because apparently Tris was the one that stole the painting. So she knows where it is. She had help from them. I knew the old couple was up to something. They seemed like a little bit shady, but good shady, not bad shady. So I'm hoping they did something good with the painting and maybe John will come back and talk to Tris and be like, I need this painting for the game. Maybe he'll let her in on what's going on. I have no idea, seeing as I have not read the series yet. I love Tate's character so much. Her female characters are some of the greatest and I can't wait to see more of Triss's backstory. So I will be picking up Forgery next. I am very, very excited and I will check back as soon as I've read a little bit of this one. Hey guys, so I'm back with a quick update. I've started reading Forgery by Tate James and I am loving it. I am almost 200 pages in and I'm definitely going to finish it today. I am flying through this book and I can't wait to get to the next one. So I started reading this on my Kindle yesterday. I didn't have access to the physical book at the time, so I figured I would just start it there. And something really cute was that in the beginning of the Kindle book, they have a little recap comic strip of what happened in the last book. I'm kind of hoping they have that in the third book as well. So we pretty much start off right where we ended. Triss is freaking out that the painting was found out to be a forgery and she's trying to figure out what to do and she gets a knock on the door from Mr. Grimaldi's goons and they're telling her that she needs to come to the house right away and she is not sure what's going to happen. She thinks she's going to die. He's going to kill her and when she gets there they have a nice little talk and he tells her that he knows she's stolen things from him he knows that she's stolen other paintings from him as well and what's going to happen is he's not going to kill her but she is going to paint a forgery for him hence the name of the book and this is how she's going to pretty much repay him as well as getting back all of his other paintings oh and also she's going to marry his son sin not the bad one dexter but the other one that she thought was okay but she really had no attraction to Oh, and during this as well, she ends up having to kill a guy in order to save her own life. And then while I was reading that part, I had the idea that John was going to be furious when he finds out that she's engaged, and he was. He actually found out she was engaged back at school. That She had come in to take classes one day. So she was talking to a student. The student saw her ring, brought up the conversation, and John was right behind them and started freaking out that she was engaged to him. But back to the beginning a little bit more. John actually hired Bram, who is the new guy in her building, so I don't feel so bad about him now. He's there to look after Tris and make sure she's okay, and he's actually from the guild, so I'm hoping that we see some more people from there as well. So John comes back to town because obviously the game's not over. He gets into it with his father, and his father beats him up because he's also playing the game with him, and he's actually the one that got arrested. I guess he beat John up, stole the painting, and then John ended up getting him arrested. But John is trying to figure out how his dad knows where he is all the time and they call somebody in from the guild to check for bugs and that guy actually asks John how he managed to steal Stanley from the guild series which was hilarious and I really really loved that. So John has a run in with Nelson and Hank and they're under the impression that he stole the painting and left, but he's trying to save face. So he actually tells them that he was in a car accident and didn't have access to his phone and couldn't talk to Tris. And they kind of believe him. I know they're still a little bit wary, which they should be. I don't like that he's lying to them. I hope he makes it up to them in the end, but we'll see where that goes from there. So then John gets a call about the game and the rules are changing now that all three of them have kind of failed to do what they needed to do to get the first painting. So what happens now is they are looking for like 24 different things hidden around the town and whoever has the most in the end is going to be the winner. But one of the twists is everybody that was playing is allowed to play again. So now there's like a ton of people going after all of these items. First item that they are going after, I guess, is hidden in one of the buildings at the school that John works at. So when Tris goes to class that first day and John finds out that she's engaged, they end up having sex in his office because obviously they still love each other. Sin just stands outside and waits because he isn't really interested in Tris anyway. They're just 
doing this to save face with Mr. Grimaldi, but right as they're having sex, somebody blows up part of the building. So we find out that the building blowing up was part of the game and then that there are booby traps set for if you get too close or if you're not paying attention. I guess already like a couple people from the game have died and now John and Tink are going to team up and try and collect all these things together so that they don't get killed. So it's pretty much just a huge scavenger hunt and I love scavenger hunts so I'm really excited to see how the rest of it goes. I know John and Tink went to steal one other thing and they thought somebody went in for it. Nobody did so they go in themselves. They had already um, disarmed one of the booby traps but as Tink's trying to open the other one some sort of like flesh-eating goo like pops out of whatever it is and since she's so short it normally would have hit her in the face and essentially disintegrated her face but because she was so short it went right over her head so now that they know that they have to be super extra careful when they're trying to disarm the traps now because they really don't want to die and then I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier but the painting that Mr. Grimaldi wants Triss to forge is this pigeon on peas Picasso cubism painting and cubism is not Triss's best painting medium so she's kind of worried about that and then she's also worried that she's going to have to make this forgery off of just photos because this painting has not been seen in like years so she's kind of trying to figure out what to do to make this the best that she can and then that's it for me right now I have to go to work and I'm going to finish the rest of it I'm really really enjoying it I'm definitely going to bring this with me and hopefully I can get to the end of it and I will check back in either later today or probably tomorrow so I'm back and I finished forgery like five minutes ago. I came home from work and just blew through like the last 30 pages that I have. Oh my gosh, Tate is so good about leaving a cliffhanger ending. I love her books for that and I absolutely loved this one as well. So to pick up where we left off, Sin is going to take Triss out to a bar. She's having some problems with her painting and he's like, let's get out of the house. We'll just go out and get your mind off of things. Of course, when they get to the bar, John and Tink are there having a drink because this is right after when Tink almost died due to the goo that's going to disintegrate her face. And obviously Triss jumps to the conclusion that John is sleeping with Tink, her only friend, and she's furious at both of them. So they can't tell her the truth about what's going on because of the game. And obviously one of the rules is the game is nobody can know about it. So they kind of have to come up with something to tell her that's not going to get her angry, but clearly it does not go that way. So she ends up leaving the bar with Sin and they go out and they see Hank and Nelson outside. So Trish just wants to leave. She goes with Hank and Nelson to this other bar to just talk to them. And John is like, I need a way to get in with them. So he has somebody on speed dial where he calls them and is like, send the picture. And I'm thinking what is going on. So he knows where Sin's either like girlfriend or the girl that Sin is like really obsessed with. He knows where she is and he has pictures of her and he sends one over to Sin so that Sin can kind of go off and do something else so that he can sneak in and talk to Triss. Obviously John's got his own ways but I can't believe he actually knows where Sin's girl is and Sin is not happy about this because he finds out that it was John and that John knows and now he's kind of retaliating back against John. So John ends up talking to Triss at the bar, they have sex in the bathroom because clearly she still loves him as well and we go from there. John doesn't really get to talk to her about anything though so the next day Tink actually shows up at the house and she kind of drops hints about what's going on. She's kind of leading Triss into things and Triss ends up guessing about the game. So Tink is like, yes, now we can finally talk about it because you know what's going on and I didn't actually tell you. So that's something good even though Triss is super angry that John was using her and all that jazz. So Triss comes over and talks to John about what's going on and at this point he pretty much tells her that he loves her in not so many words because he doesn't want to confuse her, make her think that he's still trying to play with her and he actually has her come to that conclusion. But she says that she does not love him back. But he's like, yes, you do. We'll get over this. And then he proceeds to tell her that we're inevitable. We're the goalpost. We're together. I don't care about whose ring that is or what that fucking gremlin says you're doing. We're together. We're going to be together. And when I leave, you're going with me. I love John. He really is obsessed with her. And I really, really hope things turn out well for them in book three. 
I love John because even though he's playing the game, he still really wants her, even though she has nothing to do with it anymore. But does she? Because we'll come to that at the end. So back to John and Tink. They are in the middle of going for a scavenger hunt item. It is a ruby that is on a statue in the middle of this square. And they decide to go for it instead of waiting for somebody else. So John goes up. They're working on disarming all the traps and Tink gets a phone call. So she ends up walking away. And when she walks away, John tries to pry the ruby off and a whole ton of snakes end up falling on him. And John does not like snakes. So he's like freaked out. But he sees Tink coming back and she's going to step on some. So he tries to stop her. Uh, but at that time, he tries to like jump over one and it actually bites him. And then his father shows up and is like, give me the ruby. Thank you so much. And Tink is like, I'm not going to give that to you. But he's like, give it to him now, because if you don't, he will kill you. So Tink ends up giving him the ruby. And for some reason, she has a bunch of anti-venoms on her. So she manages to give some to John and then she ends up taking him to the hospital. They're having all these conversations and it kind of dawned on me that John is trying to get his like legacy back, the Valencheck legacy. And in this book, we find out that the legacy is from his grandfather's treasure hunting days. He, I guess, found this like ship that had a bunch of treasure on it. And this is part of the legacy. So I'm wondering, and I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm thinking that maybe John's grandfather actually found the pigeon and peas painting that Triss is trying to paint the forgery of. And it's just like within this. So in my mind, John's gonna win. He's gonna get the legacy. He's gonna find that painting. He's gonna help Tris paint it. And then everything is gonna be good. Probably vastly wrong in that, but who knows? Maybe that will happen in the third book. Can't wait to find out. Then we find out though, that the next item on the list is the poppy painting. So clearly somebody knows where it is, but at the same time, Triss is trying to talk to Mr. Grimaldi to get her out of wedding sin. So she ends up having an appointment scheduled with him. She goes, she's like 15 minutes early and she overhears him talking. She hears him say that he's going to send one of his goons over to John's house to get the professor and the girl, which is Tink. Um, I think he calls her my son's whore or something like that. So he's going over there and then he's like, and you're going to go get Triss and we're going to figure out what's going on because I guess he knows that the painting is the next thing that they're going to try and look for. He just wants his painting back. He doesn't want anybody else to steal it. And obviously the people from the game know where it is and Triss hasn't given it back yet. So she overhears all of this and she starts freaking out. So she runs the other way and she runs into Bram. So Bram ends up sneaking her out of the house. She's in the trunk of his car and they go back to her apartment. When they get there though, she goes upstairs and finds something that I was not expecting. She finds her door open and she goes in and I guess she had like a painting covering some like special place in her house that was storing all the paintings that she had stolen and stuff like that. But she goes into her room and she finds John at the foot of her bed with Nelson, who is bleeding out. So I'm wondering if John knew where the painting was, went to go steal it. Nelson decided to come over because he heard something going on at Triss's house and got caught in the crossfire of something because all of these items had traps set up. So does somebody from the game know that Triss had the painting in her house and maybe they set up a trap because I highly doubt John would either shoot or like maim Nelson in any way because he does like Nelson. So that was just like so shocking. So we leave off where Triss and John and Nelson are just in the room together and Nelson is dying. Like I said earlier, I love Tate's cliffhangers and this one really, really makes me want to pick up the next book ASAP. But overall, book two was amazing and I really, really enjoyed Forgery and I definitely will be trying to get the Mystic Box edition of Restoration when it comes out. I hope I can snag myself one. If not, I'll probably get it resale. That's okay but I'm so excited to pick it up and I will be back with some updates when I start it.
Hey guys, so I'm back. I have started reading Restoration. I started it at work today. I'm about halfway through and I'm really enjoying it so far. We start off again with that cute little graphic novel style recap and I really like how they did that in this series. That should be done for a ton more series. It was a cute way of just looking at some pictures and figuring out what went on. So we pretty much start off right where we left off with John over Nelson's body and Tris freaking out because she thinks John John killed Nelson. We do find out though that John didn't kill Nelson. Hank actually killed Nelson. His husband was not seeing that one coming. John believes that Hank is actually in on the game as well and he killed Nelson because he was in the way and maybe he was just using that as a backstory to get in because they were doing some shady stuff elsewhere as well. Tris and Nelson had their own little thing going on and I mean Hank and Nelson probably did too. Maybe we'll find out a little bit more of that but yeah definitely was not expecting Hank to be the one to kill Nelson. Also because Triss is freaking out and stabbing at John, Tink comes in and she actually hits Triss over the head with a frying pan to knock her out. They take her back to their safe house and tie her up so she can't hurt herself or anybody else until they tell her what's going on. So John and Tink are talking at the house and John doesn't understand why Triss isn't believing him. I mean, he knows he lied to her a bunch of times, but he still doesn't get it. He's like, she should know I would have never have killed Nelson. But Tink goes into this whole long thing that I'm actually gonna read for you because I really, really liked it. So Tink goes, well, maybe she will be less cynical. Let's see, you took her job as a teacher to gain her trust. You made her fall in love with you, then stole a priceless painting from her place of work where she would undoubtedly be the prime suspect. Oh, and her boss is well known for killing people who steal from him. But then you did come back for her, except that all seems to be a bit self-serving when ultimately her home is destroyed and her loved ones lost. And there you are at the center of it all with blood on your hands. And then she gets knocked out and wakes up handcuffed to your bed. Yeah, I don't see you talking your way out of this one. I love that quote so much. Tink is completely right. Why would she believe John after all of the things that he did to her? But they finally get talking again and John gives her his backstory about his grandpa and how he stole a bunch of things and this is his legacy that he's trying to get so that his father doesn't get it because his father, if he would get this, would pretty much set fire to everything and burn it all. John doesn't want that. He just wants the pieces of his grandfather that he remembers and that he loves so dearly. So she starts kind of forgiving him, but at the same time, she goes into this whole long list of things that she hates about him, pretty much him just stealing her vibrators, him lying to her, all of this stuff. And there's another funny quote that reminded me of 10 Things I Hate About You, the movie with Heath Ledger. Love that movie. But Tris goes, so yes, I hate you. I hate how you make me feel. I hate that I still want you. Most of all, I hate that I don't know how to make it stop. This just hits me in a spot that reminded me exactly of that movie. But I'm at a part right now where I think they're actually just about to do it for the first time in this book. They clearly did it a bunch in the other books, but haven't got around to it this one. I had to pause because lunch was over and I had to go back, so I will be picking it up again soon. But one more thing I wanted to say was I did not realize that Bram was Carol's son. I know I've talked about it before. Carol is one of the heads from the guild. She's Danny's mom, but totally forgot that she was Bram's mom as well. That comes back up because Carol comes and talks to Triss when they're at the safe house and she kind of tells her everything that's going on. She tells her that Tink put up Triss's house as collateral because she knows about the game and everything going on. And that was the only way that they pretty much wouldn't kill her or take her out of the equation. So Tink did that to try and save her, but Triss does not feel like that. So when Tink shows up, she starts throwing things at her head and Tink's like, what is going on? And then they realize that Carol told her everything and they have to go from there. But Triss doesn't want any more lies. So she's actually like, if I'm in this, I'm in this, I'm going to be playing with you guys now. So they get the next hint for the game piece that they have to steal and Triss immediately starts being like shady and quiet while they're all planning how to get this sword that they need. Tink and Bram leave to go do some recon and grab some stuff and Triss is talking to John and she tells him that she actually knows where the sword is. Nelson and her had stolen it previously. It's not at the Grimaldi house anymore. It's in this warehouse that is under super lock and key. There's like three different keys that they need and it can only be one of them to go in because if anybody else goes in and they trigger the security device, they are pretty much going to get blown up and everything inside is going to get blown up too. 
But Tris has something up her sleeve. She actually took a copy of the other two keys because she would go in there by herself sometimes. So she has all of this stuff that they need to get this sword. So hopefully they're going to be in and out. I feel like that's not going to happen. I feel like something is going to go wrong. Maybe Hank also has some keys that he made and something's going to go wrong. But I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. I'm actually probably going to finish the book tonight. It's only like 250 pages and I'm pretty much halfway through. Tate's books are just so addicting. I feel like I need to binge them whenever I read them because I don't want to forget anything that's happening and they just go one right into another, which I really like about her books. But I'm going to go finish that and I will check back with you tomorrow with my final update for the vlog and what I thought about the whole series. Okay guys, I am back with my last update for Restoration and I really really enjoyed this book overall. So I was right, they were about to have sex. They end up having a ton of it. Tink actually gives Triss a present kind of like a I'm sorry I put your house up for collateral present and she gives her a whole bunch of sex toys that they end up using quite a few of which I thought was really really fun. <laughs> But John and Tink end up leaving the safe house. She's just there with Bram and the alarms get set off. So Bram is trying to protect her and he goes out to see what's going on and there's a knock at the door. So she answers the door and it's actually Sin. He's found her somehow and he's trying to protect her. He's like, I can take you if you need to get out of here because I know he thought John wasn't such a great guy. But Triss is like, I'm right where I want to be. Don't take me. I need to stay here right now. So he just leaves. He says, if you need me, I'll be there for you. And he leaves. So that was kind of nice. I still don't know what his end game was. We really didn't find out much more. I know he was looking for that girl that John knows where she is, but not a lot more was said about that. So I'm wondering if maybe they're going to get their own book. That would kind of be cool to see what goes on there. But who knows? And then Bram and Tink, they have this little thing going on where they're not dating or anything, but there is so much tension and banter between them. I absolutely love it. They have such a good rapport and I really would like to see more of them in another book. So at this point, they've gotten Sword, which is the next piece of the game, and they go to turn it in. So John goes with Bram to turn in the sword. And while they're going to the meeting place, they kind of get ambushed while they're on the road. A ton of people come out shooting. The car has a crash and all this stuff. So they have to get out and run on foot. So while they're off doing that, back at the safe house, Triss and Tink are actually getting ambushed. The alarms start going off and Dex barges in and he shoots Tink. So Tink is pretty much laying dead on the floor and Dex takes Triss back to Mr. Grimaldi, his dad, just so he can kind of have like a leg up. I was freaking out at this point because there's Tink laying on the floor pretty much dead and Triss is now back in the hands of somebody who pretty much wants to kill her. But after all of that, John ends up calling Mr. Grimaldi and offering a trade for Triss if she is left unharmed. John is the one that has the effin' pigeon painting. He offers that up for Triss. I did not see that coming. I know the whole book, it has been said that we don't know who has the pigeon, everything like that, but John has it. It's just in his personal collection and he offers it up. So the trade goes down, John is at the house, he's getting Triss back and they're having a meeting with Mr. Grimaldi and Dex comes in. He's like, you can't take her. I did all this work for you. Like she's not yours to give back. But Mr. Grimaldi is not having any of it. And then all of a sudden, Sin comes in and whispers something in his dad's ear. And Mr. Grimaldi turns around and shoots Dex and he's dead. I was quite surprised at this turn of events and did not see it coming. But it seems like Sin found Dex's pregnant wife who was in the hospital and told Mr. Grimaldi that Dex had beaten her and he had had the new baby. Mr. Grimaldi was clearly not happy, so he decided just to kill Dex. And he told John, he's like, you can take her now. I have other things to do. I have this painting to look at and a new grandson to welcome into the world. So he's happy, he's got what he wanted, and they're able to leave. So the texts go out that the next object for the game has been announced, and it actually turns out to be Triss. Who they are all looking for. So they already have her, so they need to protect her. So they go into a Hestia safe house and they think everything's good. There's the guild members that are watching the safe house for them and all of this jazz. But somehow Hank still manages to find out where they are and attack the safe house. This goes down in the middle of them having sex. So they're having sex and then all of these bullets start flying and they're like, uh, I think we need to stop and get on and figure out what's going on out there. So luckily Bram, who is actually good at his job, was able to apprehend Hank and everybody else that he was with is dead and Hank is the only one alive. So they're all standing in this like 
living room kitchen area and they're interrogating Hank to find out what happened and why he was hiding who he is and essentially who he is. So Hank's telling them their story, why he did everything that he did and why he disliked John's grandfather so much. I guess they were friends at one point and they were going for this buried ship treasure and they found it but Hank was not able to get any of it and he was kind of sour about that. But as all of this is going on, one of the mercenaries in the group comes up and puts his gun to the back of Hank's head and we find out after he takes off his mask and it's actually John's grandfather. He is not dead. That was a surprise in itself because the whole book they're talking about his grandfather being dead for over a year now and this is to get his legacy and all of that. So his grandfather figured that the only way to get Hank out of hiding was to put up his legacy for this. So he faked his own death and he made this game a lot more dangerous than other games in the past because of everything that's been going on and he thought that was the only way that he would be able to bring Hank out of hiding and essentially kill him. So essentially after Hank's done talking, he kills Hank and slices off his head with the sword that was one of the game pieces. And he puts the head on a silver platter and is like, I have somewhere to be now. And he just leaves. So they need to clean up this headless body. Thankfully the guild takes care of that. And I guess the game is just over at this point since Hank is dead. Nobody really won the game. They never talked about anything like that because I guess he's not dead, so there's no legacy to give because he's still alive. And at the time, I was very confused about why there's a head on a silver platter, but we find out later that Kristoff, which is the grandfather, goes to propose to Nadia, who is one of the members of the guild who was in love with his grandfather many, many years ago, but Hank kind of came between them. But I guess he made a promise that he would bring her Hank's head on a silver platter, so that is exactly what he does, and they end up getting engaged. And then one of the last scenes in the book I really found was funny, they were all at a party and John is there with Triss and they're talking to Carol. Something happens where there's a lot of fumbling around and things get dropped and John is touching Carol on her hands and when he comes back up she's like kind of curious about what was going on. She's like you better not have stolen anything from me but everything seems to be in place. So they get outside and John actually stole the ring right off Carol's hand and proposes to Triss with it. I thought that was like the topper on the cake and I absolutely love that part because now she's got this big ring that used to be Carol's. Nelson had actually made a forgery of it and he put the forgery on Carol's finger. I kind of really want to know what happens when she finds that out. Maybe we'll get it in another book, maybe we won't but I really love that he actually stole from Carol right off of her hand. And Bram, her son, was just like, oh my god, she's gonna kill you when she finds out that you did this. <laughs> but even though this book was short, it definitely packs a punch and I gave it a four and a half. Overall, I think the whole series ends up getting like a four for me. It was a great series. I just love Tate's stuff. I really like the humor that she puts in her series. This one being just MF was a little bit different from her other series, but I loved it nonetheless. But I do really want to see more Why Choose from her in the future. Those tend to be my favorite of hers. If you haven't checked out any of Tate's other Shadow Grove series, I really highly suggest them. The Medicine Kate is really good. Hades is my favorite of all of her series. I absolutely love that series and will continue to reread that over and over again. I think I'm going to try and reread that this year. And the Guild was really good, as was the Valenshek Legacy. So I hope you pick up more by Tate if you haven't already. I would love to hear your thoughts on this series or any of the others that I've mentioned. Tate is one of my favorite authors and I can't wait for her to come out with more stuff. I still have quite a backlist from her that I haven't read yet, so I will be trying to catch up with all of those as well. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the vlog and I will see you next time. Bye!